Have you ever heard the phrase, cheaters never prosper? It basically means people who use dishonest tactics will never truly succeed. And this is something that we're going to see throughout this episode of my top 10 Yu-Gi-Oh cheaters. Now this list is more for people that didn't just bend the rules to their own advantage, they basically shat on the rules to basically cheat to win. The only thing that I'm not going to be including in this list are the Millennium Item Holders. So any people who use Millennium Items to gain an advantage, I'm not going to be including this list as the biggest one would be Maximilian Pegasus. Using a Millennium Eye to see into your opponent's like hand, now that's like super cheating. But because it's like a mystical kind of thing, if I were to include all the Millennium Item Holders, they all have like special properties that give them advantages in duels. Even Yugi himself, what with his split personality kind of thing. Um, I'm going to exclude them from the list, but we're going to carry on with the top 10 cheaters in Yu-Gi-Oh! At number 10, I've gone with Arcana. During episode 59, Yugi is versing Arcana. Arcana goes through this big spiel about how he's the true wielder of the Dark Magician, and the Dark Magician will come to him rather than Yugi. So, during the start of the duel, during his first hand, he actually manages to pull the Dark Magician first turn. Pretty impressive. It's not. He basically cut his card so that the Dark Magician would be the card that he drew first. And even with Yugi shuffling his deck and himself shuffling the deck, it basically guaranteed him that he was going to get his Dark Magician first. However, you're going to notice a theme with this episode. Basically, everyone who cheats that I'm about to mention, they lose the duels. So I hope you guys take something away from this top 10 because Arcana, well, he gets his comeuppance and he loses. My favourite part is when Yami Yugi was absolutely going to let him get chopped in half by that sword blade thing, or at least sent to the Shadow Realm, I guess. If it wasn't for little Yugi, then I guess um, it would have been a bit darker that episode. At number 9, I've gone with Johnson from the Virtual World arc. During episode 105, during his duel against Joey Wheeler, Johnson was able to manipulate the duel so that all of Joey's luck-based cards would fail him. So every time he rolled a 6, he'd get a 1 instead. Or if he were to flip a coin with a 50-50 chance whether he'd win or lose, uh, he'd lose. I mean, I could say that Joey, he has a bit too much luck for his own good, so it's kind of good that he gets taken down a peg with a bit of like unluckiness. Tampering with your opponent's RNG based cards is just not on so yeah I'm sorry mate you can't do it. However things work out as Noah turns up to say yep you can't do that Johnson I'm gonna take this ability away for you. Joey carries on dueling him and with a bit of luck himself during those choices he actually wins the duel so unlucky Johnson cheaters never prosper. At number 8, during episode 71, I'm going to go with Loomis and Umbra. So we get an awesome tag duel in this episode with Seto Kaiba and Yugi Moto versus Loomis and Umbra. Unfortunately, it's spoiled by the fact that Loomis and Umbra are actually cheating during this duel. They make it explicitly clear that you cannot communicate with your opponent with what cards you have in your hand, so that you can't form basically a strategy around those cards. However, they do not do this, since they have headphones and microphones built into the sides of the masks so that they can hear what each other is saying under their breath so they're not what they're going to draw. And while this gives them a good tactical advantage during the start of the duel, towards the end when Seto Kaiba gets a bit clever and he starts telling them to doubt themselves and they start doubting each other, uh, they end up losing the duel. So uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it didn't work. At number 7, I've gone with the Rare Hunter, who uses the Exodia deck. Now, during episode 56, Yugi is versing this person. Throughout the duel, the Rare Hunter seemed to be showing some sort of knowledge of what cards he's going to draw. However, it turns out that he, he wasn't psychic or anything like that. Basically, he used an invisible marker pen to mark his cards so that he would know he was going to be drawing the Exodia pieces. And the reason he was able to see this invisible marker was because he was using special contact lenses. As well, he uses three copies of each piece of Exodia, and I don't think there's a limit to how many cards you're allowed in this kind of universe, so I don't think that's a problem. But it was pretty bad the fact that when Yugi saw that the cards were marked, he could have just, you know, said, just don't do this anymore or rub the cards off. No, he, uh, he rips up his deck and throws it in the air. So that was pretty savage, Yugi, but um, yeah, fair play. At number six, I've gone with a very dark way of cheating. So during episode 24, Seto Kaiba is basically trying to fight to win so that he can save his brother Mokuba from Pegasus. Now, Yugi himself is fighting to save his grandfather whose soul was taken by Pegasus, so both of them have reasons to win this duel. However, Kaiba takes it just a little bit too far. In an attempt to stop himself from losing against Yugi, Seto Kaiba begins to back up towards the edge of this cliff. Everyone's thinking, what's this guy up to? He stands at the edge of this cliff and basically says that, Yugi, if you attack me, I'm going to throw myself off this cliff. 
So he's basically threatening Yugi with suicide if Yugi doesn't throw the game. Now, if you watch the dub, he says that the shockwave from the duel is going to knock me back and I'll fall off, so it'll be your fault. That's pretty much just as bad, but we're going to go with the original one where he basically says, I'm going to commit suicide if you defeat me in this duel. Now, I'm all for winning. I like to win, but if I'm about to lose and I just turn to someone in the middle of a duel and says, if you beat me, I'll kill myself. Then that's not on. It's, it's not right, and you shouldn't really be doing that in any way. So uh, I'm sorry, Sir L, but threatening to kill yourself is cheating, I have to say. Or at least it's bad etiquette, I guess. At number five, I'm going to fuse two characters cheating, I guess, together. I'm going with Marik and Odeon. Now, I said that people who use the Millennium items wouldn't be on this list, and I'm not going to include Marik on this list due to the fact that he used his Millennium Rod to basically weaken people so that they'd pass out before the end of a duel. I'm putting him on here for two reasons. Proxy cards and foreign language cards. Let me explain. Now, during episode 86, Odeon is playing against Joey Wheeler, and he's posing as Marek in this duel. Marek, unbeknownst to Odeon, has slipped a copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra into his deck, and unfortunately, it's a fake card. Basically, it's a proxy. And in the real world, you can't use proxy cards in tournaments. And if you're not sure what a proxy card is, well, you substitute a card with another card that you would normally have. This is what people normally do if they want to test out a deck before they buy it. So if you wanted, say, the copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra, you'd put a fake one in. If it works well with your deck, then you get the real one. Now, obviously, this backfires for Odeon because even though he didn't want to play it at first, he ends up sort of going along with it. So both of them kind of in the wrong, but he gets his comeuppance by getting struck by lightning, so I guess it's fair. But the other reason why I want to put these two on this list is because the Winged Dragon of Ra has foreign text on it. It has the Egyptian writing, which is basically its, like, call-out thing. And according as well, which I just discovered... Due to official tournament rules, if a card is in a foreign language, you're allowed to use that in your deck. However, you have to have its English translation available to your opponent. For example, when Marik was versing My Valentine, and My Valentine took the Winged Dragon of Ra off Marik, and she wasn't able to get it out of its sphere form because she didn't recite the, the words on the card, she should have been able to because Marik should have had a little bit of text allowing her to basically translate it. So with that, he's a cheater. At number four, I imagine you were waiting for this, is Weevil Underwood. He displays two huge instances of cheating during episodes three and episode 63. His first instance is basically when he sees Yugi and he knows Yugi has the power of Exodia in his deck. And he's like, hey, Yugi, can I look at your Exodia pieces? And Yugi's like, yeah, sure. Here you go. I've looked at him. He's like, ah, thank you chucks them all off the side of a boat so that his opponent can't use it anymore. That is tampering with your opponent's deck. You can't, before a tournament, just go up to someone and just rip all their cards up in front of them. Even though it would probably give you a tactical advantage, it's very frowned upon and it's cheating. So, unfortunately, you're a cheater. And in episode 63, he paid some kid to run up to Joey to steal his deck. He slipped in a card so that he would have a tactical advantage later in the door, which was Parasite Parasite. So, Weevil, I think, is the biggest example of cheaters never prosper because he cheats a lot in this series and, yeah, he, does, he, he never wins. At number three, I've gone with my Valentine. Now, I was a bit up in the air about whether I should put her this high up on the list because she doesn't see it herself as cheating. She's using it as a form to psychologically destroy her opponent kind of thing. But let me explain anyway. In episode 6, she's displayed the ability of being able to predict what cards she has in her hand. So she wouldn't look at them, she'd just have them all face down in front of her and just say what cards they were she put them out. This freaked out Joey Wheeler because he thought she had ESP. However, in actual fact, she'd sprayed each of her cards with different types of perfume so that would mean she'd had 40 different types of perfume that would cost quite a lot of money i don't want to get into the fact that how the hell would you be able to tell the difference between each one and wouldn't they like smells combined together or something like that no, no we'll get out of the point but she says she uses this card so she can smell the card so she knows what she's basically had in her hand but she uses this tactic to smell what card she has in her hand now the reason i would call this as a cheating advantage is because she could basically smell what card she gets next and then she would know what she's going to draw, so she could use that as an advantage. So, in a way, that's definitely cheating. Even though she saw it more as just trying to freak your opponent out, I'm sorry, but you did cheat, and you lost anyway, so... Unlucky. At number two, I've gone with Esperoba. This is another one of those psychic duelists, and in episode 58, Joey Wheeler is versing him. Now, he claims to basically have a third eye or ESP, where... Joey's got his cards like this, and he says he can see what cards in his hand, and he does. 
But that's only because he's got an earpiece in his ear and all of his brothers are up on a building with binoculars so that they can see Joey's cards. Ultimately, he gets caught out by not only Joey, but by Yugi Moto, who's up there like witnessing the whole thing, and Mokuba, who discovers the cheats at work. Joey even has a clever way of sort of figuring out that it's not ESP. Maybe you learned something from versing My Valentine that not everything is as it seems. He was holding like his cards in his hand and he had school dice and graceful dice and he had his skull dice like hidden underneath the graceful dice kind of thing so they thought that he had two graceful dice so uh yeah that was quite clever of joey i'll give him that ultimately as well uh Esperoba loses gutted and finally at number one i've gone with bandit keith now bandit keith cheated twice in this series in episode 32 and episode 52. The first instance was his duel against Joey during Duelist Kingdom. Even though Bandit Keith was putting up a pretty good fight against Joey, when Joey started to make a little bit of a comeback, he did the most classic way of cheating of all, cards up the sleeve. He basically had three slot machine cards up his sleeve so that he was able to power up his monster to very high levels for that part of the series to be fair. This was spotted by Pegasus and it was allowed to continue because Joey won despite the fact that he was cheating. This is also the same episode where Bandit Keith pulls out one of those invisible guns that the dub loves to, to bring out, points at a Pegasus, but then he gets dropped down the hole anyway. And uh, yeah, pretty funny. He also pulls the same tactic against Yugi Moto later on. To be fair, he was under the mind control of Marik Ishtar, which a lot of the people in this list were. So I guess Marik's pretty big cheater, to be nice with you. This time, the way he cheats is he has more cards up his sleeve, but this one's are like spring-loaded, which is quite cool. They get Zera the Mant and the Zera Ritual card and a monster that he was able to sacrifice so that he could summon Zera the Mant out like straight away, uh, which apparently was a super rare and one of the most powerful cards in the game. Bullshit, and he had 2,800 attack. However, he loses anyway, or at least he like submits the duel, I guess, because he smashes up the Millennium Puzzle. But uh, yeah, he loses, so... Gutted. And with that guys, that's my top 10 cheaters in Yu-Gi-Oh!